Hi there. Today we're going to be looking at importing and cleaning up one of Autodesk's BIP files on a cat rig. So first of all I'm going to show you where to download the BIP files. If you go to the URL listed here, you'll see there's a link here where you can download the entire set of BIP files which ship with Autodesk. The one we're going to be focusing on is the cartwheel. You can see from the graphic here, the green is the imported BIP file and the orange is the cleaned up BIP file. And you can see straight away that the BIP file, although it's got some good motion on it, uh, is very badly lined up to the ground uh, and has other issues as well. And after you've completed the tutorial, it would look more like the one on the right where the feet and the hands engage fully with the ground. And before we bring in a BIP file, we need to make sure that we know how high our cat rig is. Now that sounds like an odd thing to say, but BIP files were designed to work on 3ds Max's biped, which can be found in Create Systems here. If I just draw one up, just spin it round, see what I need to do is I need to make the biped and the cat rig the same height, and then I can find out what height to input for the BIP files. I'm just going to move them next to each other. And what I'm aiming for is for the height to be the same at the hips and at the shoulders. For walking and for things which are only on legs, if you make the hips about the same height, then everything else tends to fall into place. But for something where you're using the arms as well, or the arms are interacting with the environment, it's important to have a good compromise in height between the shoulders and the hips so that the, the data translates across nicely. So to change the height on a biped, it's all within the motion panel. You click on this little guy here to put you into figure mode, come down to structure, and change the height accordingly. And we just up and down the height until we've got something where the hips and the shoulders are about equally far off. So you can see that the hip is a bit low there and the shoulder is a bit high compared to the cat rig. So that's 176. I'm going to use 175 just because it's a nice round number. Once you've adjusted the height of your biped, just delete any one part of the biped and the whole thing will disappear and you can be back to your normal operation again. Another thing we need to change on the cat rig before we import the BIP file is we need to give the hands an IK target. This is because the hands are actually going to be pressing on the ground and as a default the cat rig doesn't come with an IK target. So, to make an IK target if you select any part of the limb and go onto the motion panel, you'll see under limb animation rollout, there is a button there that says create IK target. Click create IK target and you can see it's created an IK target here just on the end of the hand bone. Now the reason it's put it there is because the number of IK bones here is set to three. So it's one, two, three. 3 and it puts a target at the end. But we need the IK target to be at the wrist because the hand animation from the incoming mocap data will be used to drive the position of the IK. So I'm going to change the number of IK bones to 2. It's a good idea to type it in because you can actually use decimal values in there as well. And then before I actually switch over to IK mode I'm just going to align this to its new position. So I select the Align tool, choose the hand, and I'm going to align it to the pivot point of the hand bone, like so. X, Y, Z, pivot, pivot, OK. Now it's on two bones, it's in the correct place, so I can actually slide this FKIK slider down to zero to put it fully into IK mode. And you can see now if I move the arm around, it operates in IK mode. I'll just do that on the other arm. Create IK target, number of bones two. Align the IK target to the hand bone and turn IK on. Now we have IK targets on the wrists. We are ready to import our BIP file. So to import a BIP file onto any cat rig, click on the cat parent. And then again on the motion panel, down at the bottom you have the clip manager. 
which is where you can import all sorts of different mocap formats. So we'll click the open button. Now the open button will normally take you to a location which is not within your current project folder. If I just click that you can see it's taken you down to a very odd location in a hidden folder. What I do is I just put a shortcut to where I have my BIP files in that same folder and then I can just double click on it and go straight to the, to the place. I go into gymnastics, uh, make sure it says BIP down at the bottom here and then import the cartwheel. Now here you can see is where it's asking me for the biped height. We've already measured that so I need to type in 175 and OK. And you can see now it's actually brought in a biped. You can see here is his head, his arm, his spine and so on. His foot sticking out the end there. It's actually brought in a biped applied the bit file to the biped and then it's mapping the bit file data across onto the cat rig and the way it does that is using this mapping rollout here as a default it makes quite a good stab at which one is mapped onto which so you can see the incoming data which is all set out in terms of biped nodes footsteps, pelvis, spine and so on anyone who's used biped will be familiar with those and listed here are all of the nodes on my cat rig and the ones that are relevant have been automatically filled in so pelvis is mapped onto the biped pelvis and so on. One thing that is quite important to note is that the foot platform has been mapped onto the foot and further down here the IK target is mapped onto the incoming hand data. As I said earlier this is to get the position of the IK correct in space derived from the hand data. Something that was always missing when you bring this in is the collarbone data. The collarbone animation is not actually imported. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab L clavicle here and drag it onto L collarbone here. And I'm also going to drag R clavicle here and drag it onto R collarbone there. Now it's important not to accidentally drag it onto an empty slot because there is no way of deleting it from that empty slot. You would have to clear, clear the mapping, do auto map and start again. So once you've got that set up with the collarbones in place as well, I'm just going to save that out as a mapping. And again, it's gone to a funny location. So I'm just going to go to my project folder for this. Uh, there's my project folder and I just tend to put it on the import folder and I will call it bip to cat rig save and then next time I bring a bit file in I just need to load that same file back in and I don't need to go in and change any of the mapping here once that's happened you click capture animation and when it says delete source hierarchy and remove mapping layer your automatic instinct is to click no but actually click yes because what it does is it removes the biped character that it imported here that's the source hierarchy and it also removes this extra layer in the layer manager called cartwheel mapping so just click yes to clean everything up and now you have an imported bit file Now before I clean up any of the data, there's a few things I like to fix first. First of all, I'm going to rename the layer that we brought in so that it starts to make sense. When you get a big stack of layers down here, it's important to have them name named properly. Card here. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the datum of the animation data. I always like my animation data to be consistent with a reference on the ground plane of zero. So to do that, click this little button here to get the layer transform gizmo up. And you'll see, aside from the fact that it um, highlights the entire character in outline, it also gives you this little box down here. And this is the layer transform gizmo, which means you can reposition the data any way you like in space. What I like to do is just position that so that the Z value for that, the vertical value, is on zero. 
And that means that if I do that on every bit file, they're all consistent and they all come back in on the same level. So now I come back out by clicking on the parent and turning off the layer gizmo again. Go back to my camera view. Now the other thing I like to do is I like to select all my animation data. It doesn't matter that I've selected the plane as well, there's no animation on that anyway. And I just go to my curve editor and just frame the whole lot. So you can see this is the entire motion capture data for the character that I've just brought in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these keyframes within the curve editor and I'm just going to set all the tangents to linear. It doesn't matter because the mocap data is on every frame anyway, so I'm not going to change the animation by doing that. But the reason for doing that is that when I'm actually trying to clean up my foot placements later on, it will make the animation more consistent. Just deselect again select the cat parent, so I've got something there. For a similar reason, I'm going to change my default tangents down here to linear as well. This means that every new keyframe I create will have linear tangents. You absolutely must remember to switch this back to auto, which is the bottom one on that flyout, after you've done all your cleanup because it will not reset this when you open up Max next time. It will always leave it as linear if you set it as linear. So now we're ready to go. The first and most obvious thing is that he's floating off the ground. So I'm going to create a new layer to adjust his height off the ground and it's going to be the only purpose of that layer. So from the layer flyout here, go down to use a plus W because we're going to change it in world space. And I'm going to call this layer Global Height Adjust. Now I know we've already done that with the layer transform gizmo, but if we've got the layer transform gizmo on zero, we also want this to be on the ground level and then everything will be consistent. So I'm going to start off by choosing the pelvis and each of the foot platforms, which are the little rectangles on uh, either side of the foot. Yeah. And the hand IKs that I put in earlier. These are all the parts of the cat rig that operate in world space. And once I've got them all selected, I can literally just move them down until the foot is kind of on the ground. Now if I play the animation through, I'll do it from the side view so you can see everything. You'll see that although the yellow foot is on the ground, the blue foot goes a bit under the ground, the hands go under the ground completely, and when it lands, the yellow foot doesn't go on the ground and the blue foot goes right into the ground. So what I am not aiming to do with this layer, I'm not trying to fix everything perfectly, I'm just trying to get to a kind of sensible mean height for the character in that animation. And I've chosen to do it so that the legs are right rather than the arms. Because if you imagine now, uh, if I adjusted it so the arms were in the right place, it would be a lot higher off the ground. And when I came to adjust the feet, they wouldn't reach the floor. So I've lowered it down so the feet are correct. And I'm going to change the hands and the body position later on on a different layer to make that work. So now I've got the height adjusted. Right, I'm also going to do a slight adjustment on his collarbones, because if I zoom in on those, you can see that they've come in in a rather unnatural looking position. He's gone very round-shouldered. Um, so I'm going to put another adjustment layer on those to make them fit back in the right position. And this time, because they're relative to the rib cage there, I'm going to do a local adjustment layer, so a plus L. You call that one shoulder, shoulder adjust. And then all I'm going to do is make sure I've got rotate, make sure it's local up here. So I'm rotating it in sensible axes. I'm just going to lift them up a little bit, pull them back a little bit. If you're working with a character 
with the mesh already attached. You will find you'll be able to adjust those positions so that the skinning on the shoulders looks more natural. Now you notice on both of these layers that I've created, I haven't put any keyframes. So if I look at the cartwheel data just for the pelvis there, go into my curve editor, frame it all. See, these are the keyframes for the pelvis. If I click on my global height adjust and select my positions here, frame that, you can see that my red and my green are still both on zero. You can just see the dotted line running through there. There's no keyframes. But even without keyframes, the Z position has recorded a value, and it, you can see that I've lowered the whole thing down 12. So you don't actually need a keyframe when you're just using it for a global offset. Right, I'm going to stop this tutorial there. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at how to control the sliding of the feet. So I'll see you in a minute.